So there was an interview with Dave Palumbo, who is the trainer of Triple H, on Matt Riviere's podcast. The most bizarre thing. Matt yeah, Riviere yeah. is grilling him. He just won't give up. What kind of supplements does Triple H take? How did he get in shape for this WrestleMania here? What can these? What can the guys do that are office guys and not talent? Well, he didn't say that, or I, but he, he he said he just goes. Uh, Triple H has looked really good at at um, the last. He's in phenomenal shape at the last two WrestleManias, and he goes, um, "What does he do to do that?" And the guy says, "You know," and, and I mean, he asked the question in an interesting way because it was very clear what he was asking without ever saying anything. Um, he's going like, what's he doing to get like this? And, um, you know, Dave Palumbo just goes that, that, you know, that Joe DeFranco is his, is his trainer as far as what he does. Joe Palumbo, uh, Joe DeFranco goes to his house every, every night, late at night and trains Paul and Stephanie both, um, goes through the paces at their house. They have a home gym and, um, DeFranco is the guy who's in charge of his meals, you know, what he eats and what what supplements he takes and what he takes. And so, you know, he just said that the guy is very disciplined, which of course he is. You know, you 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 pay a top I mean, if you pay a top uh trainer to come to your house every night at eleven o'clock or midnight, because it's very late when they do this, um you're going to train hard. And, and look, you know, the guy, is, is if he's not hurt, I mean, I know the mentality, you know, as far as like, you know, you, you, you have that bodybuilding, bodybuilder mentality or training mentality. The guys like that, they're going to train really hard. As long as they get to the gym, they're going to go hard. I mean, it's, 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 there's not a, you know, how would I say, there's not a lazy bone in their body. I mean, so I get that completely. You know, you don't have to worry about it. And that's what he said. You don't have to worry about it. And if you got a guy in your ping guy, to oversee your food and you're a pretty disciplined guy which he is you're gonna eat the food you know and that's not that hard either if someone look if someone's preparing <coughs> excuse me if someone's preparing <coughs> food for me for every meal and all i gotta do is eat it i'll eat it <coughs> excuse me i still got this cough but it's not you know it would be no problem so i but but his thing was is like you know what supplements did he use and the guy could have said, like, supplements. You know, he could have answered the question with supplements. And, in fact, he didn't answer the question with supplements. He said that, um, you know, that... Now, he didn't specifically say Triple H does it, but he just goes like he can't do... For, for, he was going like, well, you know, these guys, they're, 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 they're tested. And Matt Riviera comes back with, well, you know, the full-time wrestlers are tested. You know, we already know that that the part time wrestlers, it's already clear. It's already known that the part time talent, whether it's Undertaker, whether it's Triple H, whether it's Dwayne Johnson and we know Brock Lesnar, that they are not tested. I mean, that's very specific that it's only the full time wrestlers who are tested. So. So he's not tested. Um, so but but, you know, then he was talking about, well, the one good thing is that this is entertainment and it's not sports. So the guys can do. Um, TRT, which is testosterone, re you know, replacement therapy when, in low doses. Although, if you're supposed to be four to one, once you're doing TRT, that that four to one thing's out the window. You know, if you're allowing TRT, then you can then you're allowed to go come in way over four to one or six to one or whatever it is. Um, HCG and HGH. So he basically said that these guys can do all those drugs in the the guys on the roster can do all those drugs, which, I mean, it surprised me he said it. I mean, the idea of HGH, the reality is, is everyone knows, you know, that the guys with a lot of money can do it and they don't test for it. And even if they did test for it, I mean, how many guys, you know, how many athletes ever get caught with HGH? No matter what they tell you about how the, um, the testing process is better and we can test it for three weeks. We can test it for two days or whatever. I don't see people failing, you know, for that drug. And I know people are doing it. I'm not talking about WWE. I'm talking about in real sports. So, but the idea that you're just out there saying it, that, yeah, they can take HGH. That's kind of, it's, it's interesting. I mean, it's nothing, 
It's nothing that you don't know, though. If, if the, the guys who make a lot of money, because it's a very expensive drug, um, or if you have good connections, uh, that those guys can can take it and and do and you know it's whatever. I mean, the one thing is is like there's there's a lot of ways to look at it. Um, you know, if you're judging guys on bodies, and you are, you still are to a degree. But it's not like it used to be in the sense of like in the in another era if Kevin Owens had come along, I mean he couldn't even get a spot on the roster, and now he's like a big time star, um, you know. But I mean, there's you know you look at a large percentage of today's roster could not even you know get a push in the other in the old days, even though there are much better wrestlers than the guys who were getting pushes in the old days because it was a complete body business. It's not a body business anymore, but. A body is a good thing, and it should be. It should be because that's part of marketability. But if you, if a good body is a good natural body, and that's the standard that you're looking for, then that's that's the best of all bests. If a good body is a chemically enhanced body, and that's the standard, that encourages people to get chemically enhanced because you, if you're trying to compete with your body. Um, and you're trying to compete with guys who are chemically enhanced in most cases you're gonna to have to be chemically enhanced to compete with them there are always going to be exceptions there are going to be some people who can have good physiques while taking nothing because they're very disciplined and and have the right genetics but they're rarities you know um, so I mean like the, the thing that, that I look at which I guess is the bottom line on all this is that the main the main thing when it comes to the drug testing, the main reason why we have the drug testing is, I mean, there's two reasons. Number one is they don't want guys being caught with illegal drugs um, because that's a bad, that's obviously a bad deal. And the other one is health concerns. Lots and lots of guys died in this business for years and years. And it's, it's funny because it's, you know, in the last, you know, whatever it's been, five, six years, there really haven't been that many drug overdose deaths. So people have kind of forgotten and go, oh, they should just let everyone why don't they just let everyone do what they want? Why are they bothering testing? It's not a real sport anyway. And it's like, but it is real competition. And more important, guys were dying, which which in, in that sense made it more important than even in fighting and football, where guys could, you know, where there's a there's a, absolutely a competitive, there's a competitive advantage in, in wrestling. If you say there isn't, then um, the, if there's, there's, you know, in many ways, there's the same competitive advantage in wrestling. Um that there would be because you're competing for spots um, that there would be in any other sport um, and the drugs can help. But the, the key one to me was always like all the deaths and whatever it is, we're not having those deaths. So that's a good thing. So I'm not, you know, overly, um, I'm not as overly concerned as I certainly was for years and years where I was watching, where I was writing obituaries of guys in their 30s on a regular basis who were dying from drugs, you know, who were, you know, um, and and even guys in their 50s who were having heart attacks, um, you know, and that, that were heavy, heavy steroid users their whole lives. And I know people will want to deny there's any connection, but, uh, you know, I believe that they're, I believe wholeheartedly that there was, and I've talked to, you know, medical examiners after people's deaths who've absolutely said that they that they believe the same thing. So, it's um, you know that stuff does low doses of testosterone um, or even medium doses of testosterone um, cause you to die earlier? I don't know. Do super super heavy doses? I think so. Um, and if you're keeping guys, but once you do the TRT thing, you know, you're opening up a Pandora's box. I mean, we saw that in the fighting. So that's the one. And they did, you know, there was a period where they banned TRT. And I, I think very quietly they, um, um, you know, they reversed their cause, I guess is what it is. So if that's the case, that's a little, you know, wink, wink thing there. That is a change. So, you know, when there's certain guys and people know who they are, who where you look at him and you just go, there's no way he's clean. The reason is because he's probably not clean. And it's because the testing allows them not to be clean. Because if you're allowing people to do test, you know, um, yeah, you know, 
in in some form a wink wink you know test exemption then um yeah you're allowing guys to do steroids and allowing guys to have steroid bodies and um i don't know i think that that if you're doing serious drug testing same thing is in you know you know what the mess was in mma when these guys look at freaking vitor belfort just as an example you know of, of a guy i mean if ever if ever there was something that proves this the competitive advantage this guy i mean look at him look at what he looked like and then look at what he looked like afterwards and look at how he performed the guy was the freaking fighter of the year on trt you take him off of trt and everybody beat him and you take him off he looked he went from looking like the freaking you know stepping on a you know he looked like the, you know roided out scary bodybuilder dude and then he went to be look like a 50 year old tennis player in 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 what about a year i mean that doesn't happen in real life so i mean that's a perfect example of that and um i guess there's probably given the situation um if they banned it in in uh wrestling you're you would have those same quick transformations and you know obviously we've seen that with a lot of guys in ufc and uh and i don't know have we seen that in wwe i don't know